wrote it down, so I won't forget it. It's on one page. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not six pages. <laughs> Five minutes right now. Okay. Uh, how's it going? How's it going, you guys? Woo! Woo! Yeah. My name is Colby Barr. Um, I'm a co-founder of uh, Grove Copper Racers here in Santa Cruz, and I'm really excited to be here with you guys. <laughs> Entrepreneurs, thinkers, great businesses. Um, Grove's made up of myself. Uh, my other co-founder Ryan is hiding in the back, and uh, our CEO uh, Mike Howard is right over here. Uh, we started in the fall of 2007, and this year is actually our 10-year anniversary, which is Crazy. Time flies. Uh, we almost opened up in San Francisco, uh, actually 2007, but we chose Santa Cruz for lifestyle reasons, which I think you guys may all can relate to in this room. We can't give that speech in San Francisco. They don't want to hear it. Um, in the beginning, it wasn't that, that easy though. Ryan and I built our first cafe on 41st Ave ourselves without a contractor. We uh, had an unrealistic tiny budget of 160K. Not enough money. Uh, and we borrowed that for family, friends, schools, I think they say, to build it with a cafe and a roastery right next door where the Penny Ice Creamery is on 41st Ave. Uh, we opened with, uh, with less than 3,000 bucks in the bank. Totally ignorance is bliss situation going on here. <laughs> I slept on Ryan's couch for a year uh, while his now wife, Amy, bless her heart, uh, paid the rent and bought all of our food with her big teacher salary. <laughs> Working at Watsonville. Uh, we were doing $200 days and would uh, sometimes go five hours without seeing a customer. So it was a real true test of will. Uh, even so though, our goal, yeah, this is us in the beginning. I mean, that's like me with my sweet locks. Yeah, I was uh, still wearing the same black t-shirt. Uh, <clears throat> but even so, our goal at Bird was always to be one of the best coffee companies in the world, no matter what. We really didn't know if anyone would care except for Ryan and I, but Fortunately, some people did. And also fortunately, a year later, we connected with a family friend, Mike, uh, whose background is in finance and helped guide us through a lot of the stormy waters of banks, loans, cash flow, P&L, balance sheets, you know, all the really fun stuff. And then I mentioned that we opened right during going into the greatest financial meltdown since the Great Depression. <laughs> so it was awesome. <laughs> but why did we open Burke? So at, at that time in 2007, we were really unsatisfied with the coffee landscape as we knew it could be. Um, so we set out to do it ourselves. There was like this glimmer of this new wave of coffee that we kind of seen, touched, maybe visited, uh, popping up in places like Portland. There was like one shop in San Francisco and some other places, but it was just tipping. And we could see that tip, kind of like the whole peek around the corner concept. And we wanted to be part of it. So we kind of went all in. Uh, it's what people refer to now in coffee as like the third wave of coffee. The first wave being uh, your grandfather's institutional canned coffee that my dad still likes to drink. Um, actually, no, he, he recently switched, but second being Starbucks kind of culture, espresso, third place, coffee house, espresso drinks, lattes, $4 for coffee, not 50 cents, for free refills. Uh, and then the third wave being kind of what has been happening, what we've been part of, and what some other brands uh, around the world have been part of, and what Starbucks is now even actually starting to do. Uh, with the reserves grocery. Um, so but yeah, we knew that third wave kind of really began with finding the greatest micro lots of coffee in the world. And since we started, all of our energy has gone into traveling the globe, uh, finding these to share these coffees with you guys. Uh, I did that for seven years by myself. Four months out of the year, I'd be gone traveling, visiting farmers, just trying to unearth and find like the real gems. So um, we call this farm level at uh, Verve. It's, and it's where the adventure really began. So, Ethiopia, see here, yeah, Costa Rica. Um, I actually grew up farming pears and wine grapes. My parents did a few hours north of San Francisco, so I kind of knew the value of rewarding farmers for that extra effort and quality, and what potential sat there often unrealized. So we went to go find it. Um, but also we want to figure out how to portray the farm level kind of value add to our customers through quality, not like a guilt concept. Growing up on a farm, I knew that's not what my dad would want. Um, so more of like this kind of concept of adventure and exploration approach, and then ultimately just paying farmers what they deserve for the coffees and getting those great coffees to customers that we've believed would be willing to pay for them because you guys were looking for those coffees too. So we wanted to kind of connect the dots. 
So, okay, so how do we go from, we're discovering amazing coffees, and then we have this kind of plan on how we want to market them, but how do we get them from farm level to street level, as we say on the bottom of our bags? Um, one, at, one part of it, we have three ways we do it. One is through retail. So we started building cafes. Light, bright, airy, friendly, knowledgeable staff, no coffee pretension, be cool. We train, be normal. So just, just be normal. Hire the right people and tell them to be normal. Right? It should be not that hard. Um, we have four cafes in Santa Cruz. This is our recently remodeled 41st Ave, bless its heart. Just opened this last week, so you should come check it out. Um, yeah, we have four in Santa Cruz, three in Los Angeles now. Um, and one in San Francisco that we just opened a month ago, and we even have a store in Tokyo. That we just are celebrating a one year anniversary. Um, Tokyo is an amazing city, it's one of my favorite places on earth, and if you haven't been there, just go there, and then you can send me a thank you letter. Um, so besides retail, we also sell to some amazing wholesale accounts, that are kind of our second channel uh, around the country. We work with some great, um, all sorts of businesses. We work with a lot of tech campuses though, we do like all the coffee at Facebook, their entire campus. We do eBay, PayPal, Yahoo, Pinterest, Airbnb, Dropbox. We do a lot of tech campuses. Um, we do all sorts of uh, uh, other businesses as well, but high-end you know, places that want their brand, want a high-end brand. We work with some great cafes and restaurants, including uh, recently awarded three Michelin star Manresa in Los Gatos, and also Manresa Bread, the cafes in um, Palo Alto, Los, um, uh, Los Altos, and Los Gatos. They're our partners for all of our baked goods here in Santa Cruz, so. Um, and then we also, our third channel is really our e-commerce, which um, it's our ability to kind of get directly to the home user around the world. And it's an important part of our business and acts kind of as our global reach for the brand. And again, just trying to figure out how to highlight the farmer, but like, you know, farmers are proud and they're badasses and they want to make amazing coffee that you want to drink. So yeah. Yeah. that's kind of part of our deal. So, you know, we say it, we have a saying a verb about, you know, it's, uh, what's the saying? No. It's, um, some people say it's not about where you're from, it's where you're going, but we at Verse say it's about where you're from and where you're going. And that's why on our bags and everything we say made in Santa Cruz, we think it's important. But, you know, we have some aspirations. Um, you know, what are we doing? Where are we headed? You know, we want to remain independent, continue to evolve and grow the brand while staying made in Santa Cruz. We like it here. Yeah. Um, it's great. Yeah. Um, coffee's a giant market though, so when we talk about growth for perspective, like we have nine stores, we're in four cities, it's crazy. But like Starbucks has 25,000 stores and they account for less than 3% of the world's coffee. So it's like, there's a lot of coffee out there. It's the second most traded commodity in the world behind oil. It's a huge, huge, huge business. It's not like the internet, but it's, it's pretty weird. Um, um, so yeah, I, you know, talking about evolving the brand, you know, ironically, we're a coffee brand, but one of the things we're most excited about that's been the most recent evolution of the brand is that, isn't coffee but food. Um, it's something that we're really excited about. We just launched at 41st. Um, and among some other items we're offering there from and recently, some custom made biscuits um, are avocado toast because that's apparently what you do. Yeah. Um, poached egg, and so it's, it's within our core competency and within our wheelhouse, but it's just a little something trying to push the envelope, but also stay in control of our core competency. So, you know, in the end, hopefully we can help improve the quality of life for our producers at farm level, and also help make days and improve, you know, quality of life for customers at street level. So the whole thing is to focus on quality and use quality as the lever for the change, and that's what we do at Burr, so thanks. Hi. Let's take some questions from the audience. If anyone has questions, otherwise Mike will break dance. Yeah. Uh, in that case, I have questions. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, how did you decide on where to grow to? Yeah, well, we love California, we love Santa Cruz, so we were here for quality of life reasons, so we were trying to think about if we left the nest, where would we go? We started having uh, some wholesale traction in, in Los Angeles, and they were all at the most amazing restaurants, amazing places, and the brand was fitting in so well, we actually ended up going there before we went anywhere. But um, just sort of being in quality of life places. Same reason we ended up here. Scaling your business. Yeah, I, I mean, number one, 
that's a quick one. Yeah, yeah. What's the biggest challenge of scaling our business here in Santa Cruz? I mean, it's a common challenge probably, it's just finding really great people. Uh, but we have some amazing people on our team, but it has been, you know, it's, it, as, we, as we've grown, we now have almost 200 employees. Um, we're, you know, we're probably becoming a pretty sizable employer here in Santa Cruz. Uh, we have amazing people on our team, but it's definitely been a challenge to, to kind of find the right people to come over here. Yeah. Frankly, you guys have amazing physical locations. How many on your staff are designers? What percentages have represented the whole organization? Because you're killing it at design, I'm curious. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan in the back here, and Colby. The, the founders, pretty much. I mean, we, we work with some uh, outside people, but these guys have amazing, amazing vision. Yeah. Two more questions. Yes. A lot of coffee makers out there. How do you deal with competitors? I'll take this one. Um, to quote one of our kind of mentors, uh, it's actually Richard Novak of Santa Cruz. He said, just don't worry about what everyone else is doing. Worry about what you're doing and just do that. And I think that's all we can do. You can't even open a coffee shop without being near next door or across the street from another coffee shop. So you just have to have your plan and focus on it and just do it the best you can. Okay, part B. How did you handle the eye roll from the investors when you told them you were going to start a coffee shop? Well, Ryan's stepdad <laughs> asked us what our break even was. We're like, you're a break even. <laughs> um, no, I mean, the, the eye rolls came, you know, I, you know, we had eye rolls when we were trying to build our store out and we were putting in like ply, you know, bent plywood chairs and concrete countertops that we were making ourselves and people were like, oh, good luck doing this in Santa Cruz you think this is the city, and we're like, oh shit, like, I, we're not trying to be sounds, we're just like doing our thing. We love Dwell Magazine, we built our whole place out of like pages we ripped out of Dwell. And again, we just, we just had to believe in what we were doing and focus on it and just keep going. And then, it, you know, the, everyone, the right people came and have supported us ever since. Two word follow up. We focus on the unit economics as well and can show the unit economics at every level of our business, and it makes sense. All right, thank you so much. If you have any more questions for her, come see them over at the table over there.